Hello and welcome back to the David Curtin Show here on today's News Talk TNT. And I have with me Sarah Plumley, who is a teacher, an educator, and uh, and is with us to talk about home education. Welcome to the show, Sarah. Thank you for having me, David. Now, it's really great to have you on the show. And I love what you have in your motto that you have on your profiles everywhere is education, not indoctrination. I think that's something that we, we need to do for all children. But why do you have that? And uh, w- why do we need to avoid indoctrination? And is there a lot of indoctrination today that we need to avoid? Oh, for sure. It started when I was doing my classroom teaching I was a professional mathematics teacher for, I don't want to say how many years, because then people will realise how old I am. But um, I was going around the classroom realising that we're not actually teaching children the primary function. I'm supposed to be a mathematics teacher, and I spend the least amount of time teaching mathematics. All of this other stuff that I'm doing, why am I not teaching the children? I naively thought that that's what I was going to get to do. And uh, when it wasn't happening, I was like, well, why isn't this happening? And I noticed how long we have to spend on like, personal social education and sex Mm -hmm. education and all this extra stuff. I'm like, I'm not specialized in this. I'm not trained. So I realized that there was some kind of government program going on in these schools that 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 I'd worked in. And it didn't seem to matter which school I moved to, because at first I thought I was just in a creepy school. So I moved schools. Uh, But then the same kind of nonsense was coming out. And it's all of this sort of over politicized junk that young people, we're not learning ABCs and one, two, threes. We can't spell. We don't know our times tables. Why are we wasting more time on these, you know, all of these kinds of different genders that they say there are now? Mm. I was I was completely lost and I didn't realize I was quite naive. I hadn't read John Taylor Gatto before I started teaching and I wished I had because I would have understood it better what what's really going on. And I think really the indoctrination is that we're the secret indoctrination is the fact that we're supposed to continue voting for either Coca-Cola or Pepsi. We can vote for Mm. one of two big parties. And it's not true. There are lots of other people with other ideas. It doesn't just have to be red or blue, Pepsi or Coke. And that was that was a really big moment for me. It's when I decided to quit the classroom and go it alone, because it's not fair. The children should be learning things that are going to help them for the rest of their lives. How to do mathematics, how to calculate money, how to deal with finances and how to read. Why don't children love reading anymore? I would suggest because uh, all the things they get given to read are about gender or boring things, things that they don't care about, like the cost of petrol. Why would a child care about that? (laughs) <laughs> I, I totally understand where you're coming from because I was a teacher as well. I was a chemistry teacher. And when I was there, you know, last time I taught was about 10 years ago. It wasn't too bad in chemistry. And I thought, well, how can you get all of this woke stuff, if you like, you can call it that, or you can call it cultural Marxist ideologies into science or mathematics, but they managed to do it somehow. I thought that, you know, at least these subjects are objective. They would be immune. Yeah, you've got geography, literature, history. They're totally brutalizing and inverting them completely, but it's happening in mathematics as well. Um, have, what what have you specifically seen that is um, a form of indoctrination in the classrooms? The main one is that truth comes from power. <laughs> it's kind of a subliminal message because young people, when they first go to school, it's quite frightening. You, you see the little children in the infant schools. A lot of them cry. They don't want to leave mom or dad. And they, they, it's an intimidating environment, no matter how nice and gentle and kind infant school mm. teachers are. But when they start to learn real skills like how to read or, or how to calculate something, they have like a, a real affinity, a real close relationship with that teacher. That teacher becomes like an oracle to them. And, and that's it's a dangerous thing. We have to we have to be mindful as, as professional teachers that we are not oracles. We don't know everything. In fact, we don't really know very much at all. And, and we, what the problem is, is children start to think that teachers know everything and that they're the truth and that their parents are stupid. And for mm. me, the, the most dangerous message is that the teachers are the intelligent ones, the modern ones, and that the parents are the dinosaurs who are bigoted and don't know anything. That seems to me to be the real agenda, the real indoctrination in schools. It's not the obvious stuff like the the genders and the unicorns and the drag queens that's Mm. it's in your face i think that's a smoke screen for what's really going on this idea that truth comes from authority and you should trust us because we're in charge we're we're the state i i just think that's a terrible terrible message 
for our young people. And they're learning it subliminally every day. Mm. It's not over. I'm not saying that Mrs. Stegelson, who's a beautiful, lovely lady, is doing bad things to your children. She's not. She doesn't mean it. But the very nature of the way school is set up, I'm the big authority, I'm at the front, and I know things, and you're going to listen to me. It's not good. I don't think it's a good message. This is a very, very good point, because what should be the case is that parents are the primary educators of their children, and that's what everyone understands. But the moment you send your child off to school, they're there with someone who is in front of them as someone who is educated, they have a degree, they know everything, and they're giving the children more information, more knowledge than perhaps they get from their parents at home, which is not how it should be. Um um, you know, how do we get back to children seeing their parents, their own parents as being the primary educators rather than somebody who is put in a position by the state? It's a really good question, David. Thank you for asking it. Um, the problem we have is time. The state, if you want to call it that, has your children for the best hours of the day in the best days of the week. That's when the children are most awake, uh, most energetic. Anyone, anyone who's taught young children knows about the energy in classrooms, <laughs> particularly after lunch. They get the good children for the best hours of the day, the best days of the week, and for the most time of the year. So really, the only way to do it is to remove your children, walk away from these indoctrination centres, pull out your children and be their primary educator. Teach your own. They want you to think that you're not smart enough to teach your own children. Of course you are. If your children have learned to brush their teeth, use a knife and fork and tie their shoelaces, you're doing a good job. You're going to make a great teacher. And it would be much healthier for your children to have that close relationship with you rather than with their peers, which are, are really quite poor relationships. They're not good role models. As the uh, the book Hold On To Your Kids talks about this, uh, Gabor Mate and Dr. Gordon Neufeld, two eminent psychologists, that children hanging out with children all the time, very bad. They need strong adult role models. And the best role model for your child is you, the parent, period. Absolutely. I totally agree. We're going to have a quick news break now but then we'll come back and we'll talk more about home education very very important topic in just a minute this is today's news talk tnt welcome back to the david curtain show here on today's news talk tnt and sarah plumley is still here uh welcome back to the show sarah thank you um, david now, yeah you're yeah. great now you, we were talking about home education earlier now i i used to call this homeschooling but I got told off by a friend of mine who said no it's not homeschooling you should call it home education because homeschooling is different do you see a difference in those two terms and and should we use one or the other or or do you see them as interchangeable no your friend is absolutely right your friend has put you right absolutely okay. brilliant I can't, I can't believe somebody else is even telling people off for this this is great news <laughs> Yeah, I, I have a saying. I, I, I say it all the time. I really annoy people. So I apologize in advance. But my saying is this. Your children can either be educated or schooled, educated or schooled. And these things are mutually exclusive because education is about a lifelong love of learning, about pursuing knowledge and testing ideas and finding things out. You know this create a hypothesis or hopefully several and then go and make a test up and see if it works or not. See if you were right. Find out what happened. But schooling is a different thing altogether. You're being schooled in a particular way to think, a particular way to speak, a particular way to write. You're being molded and formed into a product of the system for the system. That's not OK. And what you don't want to do is rescue your children from the state indoctrination centres and then give them a schooling at home. Ah, no, we're supposed to be stopping mm. that. That's the that's that's one. I think that's the key difference between education and school, home education and homeschooling. I'm even ruder. I've taken it a stage further. We don't home educate. We guerrilla educate because guerrilla uh -huh. education is the new guerrilla warfare. All right. We want young people who can think for themselves, who challenge authority respectfully, politely and with evidence. So this is like a, the next stage of it, if you will. And it's really encouraging. We've got young people as young as nine who are running their own businesses. And one of, one of these little boys said to me, we've donated some of our profits, £7.50 of our profits to a hedgehog charity. This is a nine year old who's made money, real money, made a profit in his first year of business and donated some of that money to a hedgehog charity. It's it's mm. fantastic. The results that we're seeing already are absolutely incredible. They don't sound real. They're so good. 
But that's that what you get when you, young people have a chance, sorry, when young people have a chance to do what they're really interested in, pursue that which is meaningful. Now, they must do English and mathematics properly. I'm very strict on that, which also uh, differentiates me from other home education people. Hmm. I, I call them the home recreators because they're doing potato prints and not chemistry. I don't like that. So I'm really strict hmm. on core subjects. However, you then need to develop your curriculum around that individual child and their interests so that they can be entrepreneurs, so that they can go off and do what they're best at. Yeah, I, that's a fantastic thing. And, you know, a really important distinction, which I've come to understand. So I now use the term home education. I don't say homeschooling anymore. And I think you've really described that very well. But the government, um, along with some NGOs, is, seems to be hellbent on getting children as early as possible into the state system. So there's this focus by the government on early years intervention and early years education, getting kids out of the home as early as possible and being put into childcare centres. I mean, have you noticed that there's more of a move to this? And is that especially dangerous? Beautiful question again. Thank you. Yeah, totally spot on over the target. They want your children as early as possible because they the less of you that your children get, the better. They don't want you having different ideas and teaching your children proper manners, proper ethics. They want to teach them their version of ethics, their version of manners, their way of thinking. And we know that character forms roughly by the age of about four or five years old. All of the crucial core parts of one's character are formed frighteningly early. So the earlier the state have known for a long time, the earlier you get the children, the better. And this is why when I, I talk about education being ignored, particularly by certain sections of the alternative media, I get so frustrated because it's the young people we need to make resources for young people. If there's a political solution, political parties who are serious about actually having a good state, they need to be focusing on making resources for young children, not university students. It's too late by university. Mm. They're already brainwashed. You've got to get them while they're really young and allow them to, to read and think for themselves. If you encourage reading, writing and arithmetic properly, articulation and morality, then you're going to have young people who figure it out for themselves. We don't need to do sort of our version of indoctrination. That would be wrong also. We just need to give them the best chances in these academic subjects and they will entrust them to figure it out for themselves. Yeah. Another thing the government is doing, which also worries me and goes along with this, is that they seem to be moving to try to register people who are home educated and, and not in state schools anymore. And at the moment they're saying, oh, since COVID, we've lost a lot of children from the state system, which I don't, you know, it shows how they think that the, ch the children are not lost. They're probably being educated with their parents We're much better than in a school, but that's how they think. But there was the Schools Act. They were going to bring in registration. They've dropped that. But now there's a private members bill going through Parliament to bring in registration. Um, what are the dangers of that? And is it necessary? I think it's fear porn. I don't think it's a real thing at all. In that, in so much as if your children have ever been to a doctor, they're on a register. If your children have ever been to a dentist, they're on a register. And the Data Protection Act actually created loads of loopholes to help these agencies share information, particularly where children are concerned. They label it safeguarding by using this, ter this dangerous term called safeguarding. These people, the police, social services, they can all share your children's information without your knowledge or permission under the, mm. under the guise of so-called safeguarding. So I told parents to not be afraid of having to register their children for home ed. I don't, rec I don't recommend doing so. There's no need to do so. You're probably on a list. Most people do get contacted by the elective home education officers to find out what their home ed provision's like. But the, you know, the, it's nothing to worry about. If, if you've got the, the nows to take your children out, I'm pretty darn sure you can convince them that you're giving a much better education at home than they would be receiving at school. That's a set in itself evident. So I tell people not to be afraid. Don't be afraid of all this legislation and all this stuff. The government are really trying to keep their hands on all of the children. And I think it's very obvious the kinds of from the comments they're making sort of, oh, these like you said, these children are lost. Are you joking? Are there missing persons things filed for them? No, of course not. They're at home with their parents. That's not lost mm. children. But that's you're totally right. That's that's their language. They're using it. Oh, we've lost them. Yeah. They're never going to vote for mm. you. Never. 
Never. <laughs> <laughs> but we need more people to come out of the system. Look, just before we go, if someone wants to home educate their children, and I know there are a lot of people who do because they're very worried about what is going on in these state indoctrination centres, which is what schools are these days. How can they do it? How can they go about it? Just do it. Write your email to the school this afternoon. Dear Mrs. So-and-so, I'm withdrawing my child in favour of home education with immediate effect. Yours sincerely, your name. That's it. All you have to do. Um, and if you want high quality training, I run free courses for parents, three night courses. Every, I run it three times a year. The next one's 4th, 5th, 6th of April, 8 p.m. via Zoom. You can be anywhere in the world. If you can understand my dodgy accent, you're in. And I will help you. I will give you three nights and I will show you how to do it. And I will show you how to keep your costs low and most of all, how to have a wonderful time with your kids. And whether you choose to come and work with us after that or not is entirely up to you. Take the free nights and the, the, the free three nights and run or don't. It doesn't matter whether you join us or not. The important thing is you rescue your children and you educate them properly. Be responsible. You are in charge of education. You are your child's best teacher, not the state. Excellent, Sarah. Where can people find out more about you and the courses that you run? At sarahplumley.com. Keep it simple, stupid. I can't cope with remembering all these slashes <laughs> and hashtags and dashes. sarahplumley.com. If you stick your email in, I will send you information and it's yours to digest and take or leave as, as you wish sarahplumley.com that's fantastic i'm gonna have a look at that myself later sarah thank you so much for joining me on the show and talking about this really important topic for people who want freedom and who want to bring up their children uh for in a healthy and truthful manner thank you so much sarah this is today's news talk tnt